For x, they get 0 0.0045. This is the solve for x. Solve for x, get 0.0045. And if you look at the question, uh, can you see how this number is not that much smaller than this one? It's smaller, but not that much smaller. It's like half. Yeah, the, you wouldn't be able to use the assumption here. So whenever you see a k that is not that tiny, the assumption won't work. They had to use the quadratic to solve for this value, unfortunately. Yeah. And um, would you say the limit was when does k become small? Is it negative? I, I'm expecting k, hopefully. So if you want to just do it intuitively, you'd say k smaller, 10 to the minus 3 or smaller. If you want to do it more mathematically, then you would say the concentration of the acid divided by k has to be greater than 100 if you want to be more mathematical about it. Yeah. Then you just get your calculator. It's not, it doesn't take that long to do. But. So in this case, the concentration is pretty tiny too. Usually it's like one molar or something, or half a molar. But this is 0 0.08. So that's a pretty tiny concentration too. We need a big concentration in a small k is what we're looking for. So. You kind of tell by looking at it, it's not going to work. In the book, you even solved it with a quadratic. Okay, that's part A. Uh, halfway there. So now I'm going to erase this and keep going. Okay, remember that. I'm sure it's in your notes. Write a new reaction for K2. It is H. C2O4 minus plus water goes to C2O4 2 minus plus H0 plus. This is going to be a Ka2. It's the second loss of the proton. So we're doing a Ka2. This one's also going to be slightly painful. Um, I have a question. Yeah. I thought like there was like a shortcut because K2 equals the second ionization. Oh, yeah. And C2O4 to minus the second ionization. That's beautiful. I totally forgot about that, but you're exactly right. Totally forgot. So uh, we didn't even. You didn't even need to do this, but I wasn't thinking of it. Okay. Uh, I'll. Finish explained the way, and then there was a super easy way to do it that I wasn't thinking of. So, uh, here, what you do when you're doing a polyprotic, you don't need an ice table for the second loss of the proton. So, what you would do, you just say Ka2, so no ice table necessary. C2O4 2 minus times H3O plus HC2O4 minus. And what did I say X was from before? Was it 0 0.045? 465. 465, okay. So if that's X from before, that was a concentration of H3O plus and the concentration of HC2O4 minus. You'll notice, oh, let me write K2 is 5.4 times 10 to the minus 5. You'll notice that since these two concentrations are the same, they cancel out. So this concentration is K2. This is what we want. This number was right there. What I had totally forgot, but is absolutely true, <coughs> the concentration of the second loss of the proton is always equal to Ka2, which is exactly what we just saw 
This is the concentration of the second loss of the proton, and it's equal to Ka2. So you, in fact, could have skipped all that ice table stuff and just wrote down Ka2 as the answer. Is that okay? Yeah. And then you would take that number and put it in right there. Okay? And then you compare Q and K. And it's going to turn out, let's see what they get. It's Q is going to be greater than K. Q is going to end up being 8.1 times 10 to the minus 6. And so it's going to precipitate. Because it's bigger than K. Okay. 